Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can I have your attention, please? I have an announcement to make. The owner of Radio Americana Detroit does not reflect the opinions and views of tapdetroit.com and its affiliates. Radio Americana Detroit is independently owned and operated and takes sole responsibility for its content. Thank you for listening. Now carry on. You're listening to Radio Americana Detroit with your host, Robert Lewis. W-R-A-D. That's red. Is this thing on? You're listening to Radio Americana, Detroit. I'm your host, Robert Lewis. Hope everybody's staying warm out there. We've been having some crazy cold weather. It doesn't bother me. I kind of like it. I've really been enjoying winter this year. I haven't done a whole lot, but, you know, take the dog out for a walk in the woods a couple of times. And quiet. Feels good. Feels good. Anyway. Anyway. This afternoon's guest. Singer-songwriter from Detroit, Michigan. Mr. Mike Ward. I don't really know much about Mike, but that's what this show is about. So people know more about local music and musicians. But, uh, I've never seen Mike play live, but he did send me some music. He sent me his whole catalog of music and some really outstanding, intelligent music. I really dig it a lot. I was happy when he said he would uh, be happy to be here. So, without further ado, finish out the rest of this intro song. We'll come back with Mike Ward. You're listening to Radio Americana Detroit. I'm your host, Robert Lewis, and I'm sitting here with my guest this evening, Mr. Mike Ward from Detroit, Michigan. Hey, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm really good. Right. So you live right down in right down in Detroit, eh? Yeah. Yeah, we moved, uh, we moved downtown uh, a little over seven years ago, and uh, this is our fifth year. We're starting our fifth year in, in the building we're in now. Okay. We live right next to the Detroit Institute of Arts. Did you did you see uh, Van Gogh? Oh yeah, take off? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I that know. was a great show. I wish I'd have gone and seen that. I oh man, it yeah. It, you know, it, it it was. It's never gonna be there again. It's never. It's not gonna travel because that's how they were able to assemble all these 
you know, about, uh, there was, I think there were 72 pieces and they said about, uh, 60 of them have never been in North America. Oh, really? And most of them are part of private collections. And the only way they could get them was to promise them it wasn't going to be tied up for two years. It was going to be here, and then it was going right back to those collections. Now, um, have the Van Goghs been in, been in Detroit before? Uh, some of them have, and, but uh, the reason they had the exhibit, it's 100 years ago this year that or last year was a hundred years uh detroit uh the detroit institute of arts and the city of detroit was the first museum in north america Mm -hmm. to purchase a van gogh okay um the reason i ask is i remember when i was a kid me and my uh me and my friend we used to hop the bus and go down to the detroit institute and i remember they had I don't remember if it was Van Gogh's or if it was Rembrandt or they they Vinci had or something. They've but got they, they've got a couple of them uh, in their collection. I think the post the postman is one of them that they've had for a long time, uh, and then they have a landscape. I mm-hmm. think that, that well, this, is also this was an exhibit that was on tour and it was oh yeah, but I don't I don't remember because I was like fourteen years yeah. old. Yeah. But, but, my mom was like, why are you guys taking a bus down Detroit? She thought we were going down there to buy drugs or something. <laughs> no, Mom, we're going to get some culture. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we'd go to that cool library. Is that library still open? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember also <clears throat> you could call the Detroit library and ask them a question, and they would look it up for you. You know, Serious? Yeah, yeah. Swear. Wow, yeah. before Siri. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you could call them up and they would answer the question wow. for you. So, so uh, I appreciate you coming in here tonight. Yeah. Um, I lived out this way for about oh about twenty years. About yeah. twenty years, I lived in uh, Commerce Township. Oh, okay. So, and, just down I, the road. I know you're a busy guy, and <laughs> I know you play around a lot. Music, that is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just clarify that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how long have you been playing music? So I've been playing since I was about, really seriously, since I was about 18. Uh, so like, you know, 50 years. Okay. Uh, but I wasn't doing it all the time. I was like, I would have ebbs and flows because I had a pretty busy uh, uh, job in the advertising business that had me traveling a lot and uh, and then kids and everything else sure. it was like i found time every now and then i would kind of go for a couple months and i'd i'd play at a couple places and i'd i'd i was always writing mm-hmm. i was always writing songs i don't think i was as i know i wasn't as serious about it though i just wasn't it was sort of like my sideline my hobby right right but i grew up in uh up in port huron and i was in choirs since i was about six and then uh in high school i became a cantor for uh the church what is that so the cantor in the catholic church is sort of you lead the congregation in the psalms and the uh okay whatever whatever hymns are being sung that day so I'd have to, every Wednesday, I'd have to go meet with the, it, it was my old, uh, it was my high school uh, choir teacher, and she would work on the, the music with me, and then Sunday I would sing it. And so it was every week, it was just something different. You had to learn new songs or new new okay. pieces, and then sing them by yourself, leading the congregation. Oh, That was good. Was it something you enjoyed doing? Yeah, I did. I did it. I certainly didn't do it because I enjoyed mass. I'll tell you that. I'm a I'm a pretty lapsed Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> I went yeah. to I went to Catholic school from first to eleventh uh, grade, mm-hmm. and uh, as I say, I'm still I'm on comp time still. You know, I'm, <laughs> I, I've been in a uh, I wasn't really raised anything, but you know, if I had to say that I was, it'd be Baptist. You know, mm. I've been in a Catholic church a couple times, and that's like. 
you got to be in shape to be a Catholic. Oh, yeah. All that kneeling. All and, that kneeling, yeah. Kneeling, standing up and sitting down and standing up oh, and kneeling. Yeah. And man, when it's like you know, and, and you know, it sounds like it, it sounds like yeah, he's an old crotchety asshole, you know, or whatever, <laughs> you know. I, yeah, when we were young, though, literally those kneelers had they didn't have any pads on them. No, and they and you knelt all the time, you know. <laughs> and, my, and my mom would be like, you know, you got to kneel and be up straight and the whole thing, you know. It's like we we had. Think I'm just. Think how Jesus fell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm a, I'm the seventh out of eight kids, so it's like you know you don't make you you really don't make too much waves. You know you you just kind of uh, you just you find your way. You know, and and honestly, you're raised as much by your older brothers and sisters as as by your parents at that point. When you're when when you're the seventh out of eight kids. Those older kids have, you know, they're kind of guideposts. Mm -hmm. I was just in a Catholic church to listen to a choir down in Detroit. I can't remember the name of it, um, but it sounded so good. Yeah, I mean they were they were really good. Except There's for, some amazing churches. Yeah, uh, you know, just the just the ones just, in the in the. You know where we live in the cultural center, and then Midtown. I mean, you've got just a slew of them that mm -hmm. are great. Yeah, this place was in Midtown, just off, just off Cass. Uh, yes. Is it the Mosaic Church? Maybe it's sort of a white big. No, no, no. And then there's the uh, Unitarian Church. No. Um. Um. They. <laughs> Was, they didn't have the uh, the gates to the parking lot open, so I had to walk all the way around the block. Oh yeah, to come in, you know, instead of just they could have just opened the gate and let yeah. people walk in because everybody had to park over here anyhow. So <laughs> it was funny, but they sounded great. So when did you start writing songs? I actually started about when I was eighteen, seventeen, eighteen years old. I had I had taken guitar when I was like thirteen and gave it up pretty quickly. It was, uh, I wasn't a very good student. Um, but I did enjoy singing. And, you know, at that time we're listening to thing, you know, Simon and Garfunkel and, you know, people like that and James Taylor. And, uh, so I had a buddy of mine from choir, he was a good guitar player. And so we would do some duets and I actually wrote, I wrote lyrics for a song and I had a melody in my head right. And I sang it to him, and he figured it out on guitar. And so, before I actually knew how to play guitar, right. I was writing, writing. Oh, right. On. But so, why were you compelled to write songs? Because was it just sound like something you wanted to do. Or? Yeah, I think so. I was interested. You know, I think that I, I I got a lot out of those early records of Simon and Garfunkel. Mm -hmm. I listened a lot. We had a lot of folk music in our house between. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Irish folk of the Clancy Brothers and Tommy Makem, and I re I loved all that. But then, you know, we had like Pete Seeger and and all of that. Bob Dylan, um, my older brothers and sisters were big into Dylan. And then, you know, the Stones came out and the Who and the Kinks. And it was like, yeah, I'd, I want to I wanna write some music. And there will never be another another time like that again. No. Know, where no, because it was just like, this is, wow, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and it was like everybody in the, you know, everybody wanted to do that, yeah. and they were doing it, mm -hmm. you know. And you mm -hmm. you go and, it, I mean, it's it's just amazing the explosion of acoustic music that happened at that time, mm -hmm. and, and non acoustic. I mean, mm -hmm. really, all all that. Yeah, the yeah that whole just, the whole scene, the way it evolved, like with the 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 folk music. And then, you know, yeah. into the British invasion. And, and, and you know and, that they, you know, I think what we're learning now, like what we've learned, you know, about the Beatles and about the Stones is how much they came over here and, and were listening to like right. Muddy Waters and they were listening to right. all those great blues guys and they were listening to all that and they, they took it back. I, I just had this discussion with my last, with my last guest um, about how, you didn't hear that music here, and you know the, you know they were eating it up over there. Yeah, and then 
now they're playing it, and they were like, "Hey, where'd that music come yeah. from?" It's like, it yeah. came from here. Where, yeah. What do you mean? It's like, look where at, did it come from? Look at Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Look at yeah. Led Zeppelin's yeah. first album. Yeah. It's like Willie Dixon. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like the, you yeah. know, it's like I think half of that album was yeah. was written by. The um, shame about that is, is they never gave I those know. guys credit. I know. And that that's and yeah, that's that's one thing I don't like what they did. You yeah, know, but. Yeah, that they that they that they absconded it and they absorbed it mm-hmm. and didn't didn't really give rightful credit right. where it belonged. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because who cares? But you know. now the Stones were just the opposite. Yeah, they uh, they were asked to play a TV show. And they and uh, I forget what show it was, and they said sure, but uh, Howlin' Wolf has to play too. Oh. So they they weren't going to play unless Howlin' Wolf. Played so they wanted the Stones on, so they let Holland Wolf play too. Really? Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, that's that great. That was uh, it was like Whistle Stop or something. Yeah, a TV show, something like that. I don't know if that was a British. Was that a British show? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you want to play a song? Sure. You play some songs. Sure. All right, nice. we're gonna take a break, and when we come back, Mike Ward's gonna lay some tunes on us. All right. All right, we're back with Mike Ward. He's going to play some songs. What's what's the name of this song, Mike? Uh, this is called Broken. Broken. Oh, I remember that. I played this before. Yeah? On my show. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a true story. Uh, it's not about one particular person, but... It's true to somebody. He, yeah, it's true to somebody, and I knew I knew a bunch of people in my throughout my life that um, would fit this bill, different parts of it. Anyway, right it's... Uh, about those uh, truck stop troubadours. Had broken teeth and broken strings Had no more songs left to sing On the road since 76 Playing mostly for drinks and tips Drove a beat up old blue Chevy van Slept in the back on some bags of sand From El Paso up to Estes Park Well, he took his time Making his musical mark And you could hear him sing I can't turn water into wine Turn left when I should have turned right I could turn the other cheek Turn myself in for being weak Get the hell out of my own head Make my peace Where I make my bed Where I make my bed An awkward man never got close to anyone Lyrics told the tale of a life on the run Fell for Rita who deserved much more Than a tired old truck stop troubadour Who played Willie Whalen and some Buck Owens When the going got tough, that's when he got going Never forgot the words to any song I couldn't remember what street he lived on And you could hear him sing I can't turn motor into wine Turn left when I should have turned right I could turn the other cheek Turn myself in for being weak Get the hell out of my own head Make my peace Where I make my bed 
where I make my bed. Two packs a day, cheap case of beer. He was running out of minutes, hours, and years. Found him face down, his lips were frozen blue. It was his final show at the Red Horseshoe. And you could hear him sing, I can't turn water into wine. Turn left when I should have turned right. I could turn the other cheek, turn myself in for being weak. Get the hell out of my own head. Make my peace where I make my bed. Where I make my bed. Where I make my bed. Thanks. Very nice. Yeah, so that's... Uh... So that's from the album uh, Particles to Pearls. Okay. Uh, that was um, released in June of this year, uh, mm-hmm. of last year, and of 2020. Okay. Where can uh, somebody find your music? Is... So I have a website, okay. and my nickname growing up to playing hockey and stuff was Psycho Ward. Okay. Had a Psycho really Ward. yeah, really bad temper uh, <laughs> as a youngster and okay. as a young adult, kind of got over it. But uh, I uh, I I uh, added Psycho songs to my my name because of a mix up on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Actually, I had this horrible, filthy comic from Montreal named Mike Ward, <laughs> and his his stuff was all over my. Spotify page, my YouTube channel. So I added Psycho songs Uh to clear it up, and it did. But uh, so my website is just Mm psychosongs.com. That's P S Y C H O songs. Okay. And uh, people can find it there. I'm on Spotify, I'm on iTunes and Amazon, and everywhere else. Yeah, I I listen to Spotify all the time, so I'll. And I, I, I use Bandcamp a lot. Because Bandcamp, the musicians like Bandcamp because the money comes direct to us. Mm-hmm. You people can buy it digitally. Mm-hmm. You don't buy it physically. You know, it's it's a digital download. Right. Right. And uh, but like today is Bandcamp Friday, and every uh, first Friday of every month they do this where 100 percent of the money comes to us, so they don't take anything. Okay, which is kind of right. cool. Right. Um, but yeah, they're. Uh, I'm on I'm on Facebook and what all those. What does that those. cost yearly? Uh, for me, yeah. nothing. No, nothing. Band- I just sign up. Bandcamp. Oh. Bandcamp's free, huh? Yep, Bandcamp is free. Oh, yeah. I never knew. That. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's a really good platform, uh, and uh, you know, there's just tons of music you can find on there, and you can wish list it and just. So. So you get on Spotify and all that through yeah. being on Bandcamp? No, I'm on Spotify. I I signed up. You you know you you do these deals either with uh, some people use right. DistroKid. That's what I'm with. Okay, I'm with yeah. CD Baby. Okay. And you know I started That's there. That's what I was thinking. Of CD okay. Baby. Yeah. CD Baby is you know I I. St- I stay with them even though I'm frustrated by yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, yeah. they're not. They're not. You know, it's like it's all. It's all such a game because you're you're getting so little. Yeah. It's like, it's it's the. I guess it's the price of admission. You know, it's like, okay, you want to be validated. You you know you if somebody says, right. are you a songwriter? Yeah, I got a. I got. I got four albums on Spotify and on right. iTunes, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. like, okay, all yeah. right, you're okay. And, you know, it's yeah. like. After two years, I have like 70 cents or something like that. Oh, totally, <laughs> totally. I get these, I get these, you know, deposits in my account. Yeah. I'll tell you, the to me, the only thing that I've found that really uh, pays anything uh, is, 
you know, when you play live and you report your stuff to BMI, you're live, you're BMI live. And that's yeah. a regular, that's a regular, I've, you know, check that I get. I've and I can. I've got a couple of those. Um, after playing at uh, Third Monk Brewing Company. Yeah, yeah, he's there. great. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was that was cool to do that. <clears throat> so, That's a good place. I like you that. You know, I uh, I had my I had a song put in a movie. I never got paid for it, even though I'm registered with BMI. They never submitted the cue sheet. What? It's, it's not like they didn't even have to pay me. BMI would have paid me. Yeah. Yeah, but no, never. Got wow, paid. what movie was it? Uh, well, I, I don't really want to say. <laughs> okay, I mean, all right. I, I don't want to talk bad about the guys that. Okay. Because this one it. guy really went to bat for me to get the song Got in it. there, and it really wasn't his choice. Yeah. It wasn't his fault. Put it that way. But I don't, you know, I don't want to. Yeah. Mention any names, but yeah. I'll, I'll tell you when we're not talking. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay. <laughs> but um. How about another song? Sure. Let's take a, sure. This is uh. Let's take a quick break here. Let's, okay. All right. So, what's the name of this next song you're gonna so do? So this this song is called Compact Life, okay. and uh, it's kind of my uh, my story of of downsizing and kind of making fun of it at the same time, and <laughs> and life as a partly life as a musician, and uh, just has a. A, a little bit of a smile to it. Okay. Um, and this will be on um, an album that'll be titled "Love Never Rests," and that's going to be released in April. Okay. And I'll uh, after this, I'll uh, in a couple weeks I should have the files. I'll send you. I'll send you the files yeah, for they, it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be happy to play it. Got a compact car, whole lot easier to park. Fits in those hard to fit spaces, never a part of street drag races. Driving next to an SUV, well, I feel a little puny. It's good on gas, near and far. I got a compact car, oh yeah. Got a compact build, five foot five, still strong will. As a kid, I was sort of stocky, bad for hoops, good for hockey. Wished I was tall and thin, and maybe a bit more significant. No fashion sense, no frills. I got a compact build. Oh yeah. I got a compact bill But I'm expanding my heart Stretching out my soul Letting my spirit span this entire Earthly globe ain't gonna let this moment go Got a compact disc All it took was to take a few risks Folks who believed in me All my friends, my extended family Got no vinyl or cassettes Nor many financial assets Can anyone still play this? I got a compact disc Oh yeah I got a compact disc Right over there with the t-shirts and the koozies mm. Got a compact life 
Some of you may wonder why Downsized a few years ago Here's what I've got to show A smaller carbon footprint A 42-year sacrament Still makes me feel so alive I got a compact life Oh yeah I got a compact life Oh yeah I got a compact life With a compact car and a compact build I got a compact life With a compact disc in a compact world I got a compact life mm. Compact home, compact wife I love my compact life Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I started playing that out uh, over the summer and the fall. And uh, that's a good song live, for sure. No doubt. Um, can you take a request? Mm hmm. I would like to hear that song. Uh, uh, now I forget the name of it. Um, something about lights. Oh, our time to shine. Our, our turn to shine. Our turn to shine. That's a great cool. song. Cool. I I don't mind playing that. That one I will use a pick on. Okay. So we'll probably have to adjust your. Uh... You tell me when you're ready. You go right ahead. Okay. I'm the last of my kind An incandescent life from another time So to turn on I won't last long Sort of like this old song I'll be replaced by an LED 820 lumens like a new TV Find a metal low some improvement Part of the next youth movement Energy efficient for decades to come By the time it goes dark I'll be gone, I'm a dinosaur made of glass and tin Take me out, screw a new one in But for now, I like the way Brighten up your everyday If only for a short time It's still my turn to shine I can chase away the night I'm the perfect reading light Whether it's an old newspaper Or an Elmore Leonard caper When I'm done reuse my glass And those tiny little wires of brass Can't do much with a broken filament When it's no longer radiant But for now, I'll light the way Brighten up your everyday If only for a short time It's still my turn to shine Still my turn to shine I've been flickering for a little while I'm on my last mile let me illuminate your smile Before I go out of style In the days before lamps We'd sit around the camps Look to the fire For all we desire Maybe that day will return When all we will burn is ourselves in the sun We'll let it light our way Brighten up our everyday Whoa, whoa For the rest of time 
it's our turn to shine. We'll let it light our way, brighten up our every day. Whoa, whoa, for the rest of time. This is usually where people sing along. It's our turn to shine. It's our turn to shine. Come on, everybody. It's our turn to shine. 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 Hey, thanks. That's a cool song. It's a yeah, it's a really fun I've seen, song. I've seen the video of that too. It's my pretty, son, my son did that. That was pretty clever. Yeah, right. That was a, that was a good good video. And I'm, I assume that's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I have a YouTube channel. Okay. The same thing. And yeah. Uh, yeah, my son is a really talented filmmaker in Brooklyn. Oh, right on. And uh, so we went there. Uh, let's see. We we finished the album in. During the pandemic, we were, we, we had, so we had, we had gotten all my parts done at Dave Roos, mm -hmm. uh, and then the pandemic happened in March. Oh, right. So we finished in February with my parts. We were just getting ready to record the other guitars and the background okay. vocals. Yeah. And so in July, we went back to doing it. But we would do one person at a time, one person in the studio. You know, it was right. like, because yeah. there was no vaccine at that point. Mm -hmm. We were just masking and right. everybody was taking precautions. Yep. Uh, but we finished it. And then uh, in September of, the, of that year, my, my wife and I went to visit my son in Brooklyn. We drove out. I took my guitar and he shot two videos over the five days we were there. He shot one, the light bulbs one, and he right. shot it in his 255 square foot studio apartment in Brooklyn <laughs> at, with a green screen. And then he had all those light bulbs right. and then he assembled the whole thing. Did he really? Yeah. And then the other one was the, uh, uh, the, um, the one, the song that I do for the homeless, which is No Way to Live. And we shot that actually in, in Prospect Park. Okay. In uh, in Brooklyn, and then we borrowed footage. Some of the footage came from here, came from Detroit. Okay. Uh, some of the stills came from photographers that I know in Detroit, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we made that song available uh, for use for the Mat Motor City Mitten Mission. Okay. Where Very we nice. will will make contributions based on the money we we get from that song. Okay. Um. So let's take a break, and when we come back, maybe you'll play that song. And, I would love to, because it's uh, it's cold outside, and I right. like to remind and, people. And, and you can and you can uh, promote the uh, the the charity yeah. involved with that song. Cool. So, all right, you're listening to Radio Americana Detroit. I'm your host Robert Robert Lewis. Almost said my real last name. <laughs> <laughs> Not Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And uh, so we'll be back. Stick around. Fooling. All right, we're back with Mike Ward here on Radio Americana Detroit. So, Mike, uh, we left off. You were talking about a song that uh, deals with a homeless problem. Yeah. And a and a charity that you're working with. Yeah, um, we work with uh, Motor City Mitten Mission. Gail Marlowe and her group. They are. They're on the streets 365 days a year, uh, every day. And they're from, they might be driving around with a van full of clothes. They might have, they feed about 150 people a day. Uh, they try and find places for people to, to shelter when it's really cold to get them out of the right. elements. Right. Uh, but it's an amazing group. And um, so when we released No Way to Live, uh, we made a, we made contributions every time we got a check 
uh, for that song, they get a check. So, oh, and we still nice. do that. And especially now, you know, it's going to be seven degrees tonight. Uh, and when we're right now, uh, this it's tough, you know. And I I relay it in this song. It's it's it could be you, could be me, could right. be uh, our brothers, could be our sisters. You know. Yeah, it, it's hard because <clears throat> uh, we have. We're so fortunate, you know. Yeah. It's hard not to pass like judgment on somebody. Yeah. Seeing them out there going, you know, ah, they should get a job, whatever, right. you know. But everybody has a story. Everybody and, has and, a story. And, and yeah, there's somebody. There's people out there that are playing it, but there's many, many out there that are not. No. And um, yeah. And, and what's even sadder is, is what is been put in place to for people to feel the need that they can do that yeah you know yeah. even if even if they're con even if they're con and what it's, st- it's what's still a tough on? life yeah <laughs> yeah it ain't easy yeah so, so. all right anyway the, the song. song the song is called no way to live I sleep on the sidewalk, the cracks in my back All my possessions in a clear plastic sack I got holes in my pockets and my shoes are untied Cold's moving in and there's no place to hide Don't ask for much, I'm just looking for change Years of living this life have clouded my brain But I'm reading my book as I sit by the curb Most people figure I'm somewhat disturbed Why can't you turn your life around, they ask Why can't you turn your life around It's a question I hear every day of the year Why can't you turn your life around? Don't judge me or think I'm just down on my luck It's like a catch-22, that's where I'm stuck No training to speak of, job prospects are dim I could eat all my wages, but I couldn't pay rent My skin's turned to leather, my eyes have gone dark Can you look past it all and see deep in my heart? I used to have goals and I used to make plans Now I sit here hoping someone gives me a hand Why can't you turn your life around? They ask, why can't you turn your life around? It's no way to live and there's nothing to give Why can't you turn your life around? I'm somebody's daughter I'm somebody's son Someone who played on your street carefree in the sun I might have been through a war or run away from it all Watched over your kids as they're learning to crawl My story is told on a handwritten sign It's the only thing left I can truly call mine To protect me from rain I sleep under a bridge I have no idea how far I am from the edge Why can't you turn your life around? They ask, why can't you turn your life around? When you're always on guard, eye contact is hard Why can't you turn your life around? Maybe I got a will And I still have a voice Do you really think I'm out here by choice? 
I pray to God and I hope He can hear I ain't in this place this time next year Why can't you turn your life around? They ask, why can't you turn your life around? It's no way to live and there's nothing to give Why can't you turn your life around? You can join me again Why can't you turn your life around? They ask, why can't you turn your life around? It's no way to live and there's nothing to give Why can't you turn your life around? Woody Guthrie would like that song. Yeah, I think so. Nice. I think so. I've had a lot of, uh, had a lot of compliments on it and uh, uh, I, I think it's done a little bit of good. It's got a lot of soul. Thanks. I mean, it's Thanks. Very, it's very real. <clears throat> and I wrote that really after being in Detroit for a couple years. We we bike and we ride, we walk everywhere. And you know, we just try not to judge. Mm -hmm. Just try to help where we can, but right. you know, you can't help but uh you know, if you have an ounce of compassion, you, you, you can't help it. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you want to want to plug that charity one more time? Yeah, it's called the Motor City Mitten Mission. And that's their website. That's their Facebook page. You can find them. And, uh, yeah, if you can, they take donations of clothing. They take. Uh, we're doing a clothing drive at our in our building in a, on on uh, Valentine's Day for okay. them. Okay. And uh, yeah, they're in they're located in Warren. Okay. Uh, I think they're no St. Clair Shores. They're okay. on. I think it's on Warren in St. Clair Shores. So, All right. but good people. Very good. Um, all right. So moving along, mm -hmm. we got we got about ten more minutes here. Okay. Um, so, do you remember the first song you ever wrote? Oh man, I don't think I remember it. No, I, I think I, I think it was something that I was I was inspired by um, the musical Hair, <laughs> and and so it was a, uh, it was something to do with uh, you know at that time the Vietnam War was such a big, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you know, it was this thing looming over all of our heads, mm -hmm. and uh, especially having older brothers, and and they were all getting numbers and trying to figure out how to right. not not be drafted. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think it was something to do with that. You know, I think I think the 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 earliest song that I still play, I think was I think I wrote it in 1976. Okay. I think that's as far back as I go in my <laughs> with my songs that right. that that I do. I, I that, that you uh, still play, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That I that I, that I still play occasionally. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my first record that I made was called "We Wonder," and most of those songs were from the late '70s or the okay. '80s, and I, I I had a couple new songs, and then I I I was fortunate enough to get. Get some studio time uh, from a friend, one one in Chicago, some in Detroit, and I put together this album on on a shoestring, right on. and then had nothing, no idea what to do with it. You know, I just <laughs> I got an album now. <laughs> what do I do? You know, I didn't know. Oh yeah, you're supposed to go out and play it, right. and you're supposed to like do all this stuff with it. And I've, <laughs> I I have since learned how to. Right. Funny you mention a shoestring because one of the first songs I ever wrote was called. Broken shoelace mm. blues. Mm. <laughs> That's great. And, and my buddy goes, he goes, man, nobody gets bummed out because they broke a shoelace. I was like, no, but they get pissed off. And, Damn right. And, you know, they're they're bummed out because they don't have another one to replace it. That's right. <laughs> well, I I used to spend a lot of the time when I was going to school. I I I I was. I, I like to go out to the bars, 
but I just as much like to sit in my basement and play guitar mm-hmm. uh, it, when I wasn't in class. I, 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 would, I would play for four or five hours, right. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, it's funny because I, I made a bunch of recordings back then just on, on my cassette player, and I had, right. I had a, a, a couple microphones, and I would, I would make these home recordings, and I, and I listen to them now, and I go, wow, you know, I think I could play. I think I played better guitar then. <laughs> I have I have recordings like that too. It's like, oh, I'm not sure I can play that now. <laughs> Did you ever use uh, two cassette recorders? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that was the the poor man's multi track. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's I had funny. a TX. I had a TX that that had to. Right. Yeah. But it, uh, you know. I was always uh, I was always writing. Uh, I wasn't very refined about it. I really didn't, you know. Uh, I think in those days when I was working, my job was uh, to come up with ideas for commercials, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you come up with a hundred ideas and you put them up on the wall, and everybody can rip them to shreds, right? So for me, the songs were like. I'm not really interested in anybody having any input in them. I, I, they're mine. Right. You know? Yep. And yeah. the funny thing is now, since I quit the business, and I started, you know, sitting in on some songwriting groups, and, and I'm, I belong to a couple of them online. And, you know, they've had a real good impact on 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 my songs. You know, just tweaks right. and, yeah. you know, somebody saying, you know, that line doesn't really work. What if you did this or what if you did that? Right. Or what if you played a minor there instead of, you know, all majors or whatever? That, that's something I struggle with is like, you know, people suggest, I'm like, well, no. Right, right, right. right. Well, <laughs> no, uh, look, I didn't write that. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the, ultimately, you know, it's, I, it's funny because I took a class with Matt Wotroba and he said, look, ultimately... Everything is the songwriter's choice. Right. You can choose to do it or not do yeah, it. It's, yeah. it's like, but, but yeah, because ideas you know, come from everywhere. Yeah, just from people talking. Yes, and and uh, I was on a train going to New Mexico, and there was this there was this young kid sitting in the uh, in the club car, you know, and he had a guitar, and he didn't know how to play guitar. He was playing two strings, <laughs> but he was, you know, he was. Singing his own yeah. songs, you know. Yeah. He, he was playing. He was playing a song, and I and I and I, I told him about you know writing songs. I go, you know, songs come from anywhere. It's like, yeah, it, you, you just listen to what people are saying. Listen to what you're saying. Yeah, you know, you know, it becomes a song. This could become a song for you. This conversation right now, yeah, could become a song for you someday. Yeah. So. So I still follow him on Facebook, and he's oh, that's great. Yeah, he he was a young kid. He was like twenty years old, twenty two years old. Yeah, and he was leaving um, um, uh, Missouri. Uh, what's the big city in Missouri? Uh, well, there's Kansas. St. Louis. Uh, oh, St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, he was he was leaving yeah. St. Louis and going out to L.A. He had some cousins living out there, so it's. So that was, you know, that's what yeah. I told him. I go, there's a song and everything. Yeah, there is, you know, and that I, the thing in that I've, I just, I'm well, always I, writing. I I don't know about you, but I find now, like if I'm riding a bike, mm-hmm. or you know, I I get more ideas riding a bike than I do anything. Oh really? Yeah. And I don't know why it is. I don't know if it's the rhythm of the bike. Uh, you know, I'm generally, mm-hmm. my wife and I ride around and, and next she'll be like half a mile ahead and all of a sudden turn around and realize that I'm I'm standing back there <laughs> making notes or I'm right. I'm making notes on my phone or I'm singing something in my phone. I've, I've done that on my motorcycle <laughs> going 80 miles an hour. Oh, man. Yeah. Tell my buddy, pull over. Next. Yeah. Next. Yep. And you go, what's wrong nothing and i start singing into my phone you know <laughs> yeah it's great though i mean i have to say i cuz i used to i used to do a lot more uh note taking on paper mm-hmm. but uh i'll tell you since i started using notes on my phone i i don't do that as much yeah. i i find it 
real easy, and I keep it I keep it next to the bed at night. Yeah. And there's so often times where I, uh, I'll start. I'll wake up in the middle of the night. And I can't get back to sleep because some line, mm-hmm. something is rolling around in my head, and and unless I get up, unless I get up and write it down, I'm not yeah. getting back to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So, right, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like it, it's like it's it's crazy, and I, I that seem, that's a common, a very common thing I know among uh, any writers right. that that they they get an idea, and if they don't get up and write it down. It'll it'll bug you. My my big, biggest inspiration hours are like early in the morning, you know, yeah. when everybody's, you know, sleeping, and I'll just write stuff down. And Did, was it always that it, way? Because mine used to be like after midnight. Mine well, was mine was like yeah, that, it's that, kind of like that. Too, yeah, but um, but now for the last ten years, it's been those early mornings. When when my wife worked midnights, it was those hours. Yep. And then when she got up early, you know, when she went to days, she got up early and left before I did. That gave me a couple hours yep. to, to mess around. So, Which is cool. Yeah. It's great to have that solitude. I really, I really like the early morning hours. So I, me too. Yeah. Even when, when I worked, when I, had, when I was in the advertising business is notorious, especially on the creative side, notorious for, like, people... They roll in about nine thirty, ten, ten thirty, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I was always there like at eight thirty, partially because my kids were getting off to school, so mm-hmm. I was up anyway. But I loved the quiet in the sort of the calm before the storm, before mm-hmm. all the shit hit the fan. Right. I was up and I could I could organize stuff and I and I would have more ideas, more right. more clear ideas, I guess. Because right. right. sometimes. You think you have a really good idea at like three in the morning, yeah. And then you wake up the next day and you go, "That wasn't very good." Yeah, I got a whole book <laughs> full of those. <laughs> I go back. I, I read these things I wrote years ago. That sucks. That's a, so I start ripping them out. I go, "That's a burn uh, pile. That's a burn pile." You know. Don't burn them though. <laughs> we had we well, were. I'd rather burn them than just throw them away. Though. Yeah, but you, you know, we were we were uh, last year. Uh, the Folk Alliance conference was was not in person; it was online. Mm-hmm. And the keynote speaker was Margaret Atwood, mm-hmm. uh, who wrote *Handmaid's Tale*. Okay. And but she is also uh, writes poetry okay. and has actually dabbled in some songwriting. Mm-hmm. And um, she was talking about that very thing, and she was in her in her office when she was doing the Zoom mm-hmm. presentation, and she goes. She goes, you know, I got a stack of these unfinished things. And she goes over and she goes like this. And she basically pulls out this stack and they're all like crinkled and stuff. Right, and right. she and she picked one up and she just read it. It was a poem. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, that was pretty damn good. You know, and she goes, oh, I might have to do something with that. Yeah. You know? Well, I, yeah, I come across those every once in a while. But most, most of my stuff is just like bitching about life. It's yeah. Like, eh. Yeah, you know, <laughs> right. Nothing special there, but you know, every, but you know, every once in a while, you know, oh, that's a good line, you know that, you know. Yeah. It's it's those those little things in that, so, um, but I I just I like the the morning hours and yeah, learning how to dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So and you know, I I one of the other things I I don't know about you, but. I have, I've learned to, uh, like if I'm, I start a song and I, I don't care if I finish it at night because I've learned now that if I go to sleep with it, a lot of times I'll wake up and it'll, it'll get finished. Well, what happens with me sometimes is I'll start one and if it's good, you know, I I might start it, but I don't know where it's going and I can't find where to go next but so i'll go through my day but if it's still sticking with me and it won't leave me alone eventually it becomes a song yeah I, and i know that's the way you kind of know yeah 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 but, it's true you know and other songs you know will start out like that and then i'll come back to it and it's like it, it'll just fizzle out and not really be anything yeah 
So, yeah, it's, do you start, it's a strange thing. Do you always start one way or another? Or do you, I mean, like lyrics first or music first? Or do you, melody, does it, melody melodies, first? Melodies, melodies. Um, yeah, and just like, I'm limited and I'm, I, I know nothing really about playing guitar. I know, you know, I know how to keep a rhythm and play basic cowboy chords and they're all the same chords. I just play them in different, <laughs> different directions. <laughs> right? And if so, you get tired of that, just flip the guitar over yeah. like Dan Menard, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, um, so I'll just, I'll, yeah. I'll, a melody and, and then random words and just searching for that one word. Right. That, that stands out. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, let's, you get a phrase or you a get a sentence yeah. around that. So. I kind of I've done that a lot where I find a melody and I just keep playing it until I get uh, you know, something that sticks. Mm -hmm. But lately it's I I I can do it either way. Uh, I'll, there's a lot of times where I'll have an idea for a lyric, I'll have an idea mm -hmm. with a line and a I'll actually get a chorus constructed. And sometimes that's more restrictive because then you're trying to find a melody to fit your phrasing. Right. And, you know, I've had to then sometimes go backwards and, and actually restructure that in order because I find a melody and I go, oh, now that doesn't fit that. Right, so. right, yeah. I, um, my last song I wrote is yesterday, actually. Wow, that's a really good song. Yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't think you wrote that, yeah, dude. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> good one. Good one. <laughs> but it's a it's a hobo song. Oh and yeah. I didn't start out writing a hobo song. It was just from a line, then another line, and turned out to be a hobo song. So now I have two hobo songs. Nice. And they both started that way, you know, and it's yeah. It's, it's really cool. I mean, it just there's a couple good lines in there that I that I like. My only problem is I, you can tell by my voice I can't sing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets really frustrating <laughs> when you got an idea for a melody and you can't sing it. Oh. So I'm thinking about going into rap. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Well, yeah. you know, li listen to, who is it? Uh, Todd Snyder, you know, he just oh, speaks. Love, he does a lot yeah. of speaking. Yeah. He's he's great. Yeah, I just love talking, him. Talking Seattle blues. Yeah, he's talking Seattle blues. Exactly. He's got a couple songs like that. It's yeah. Just, he's great. Just, oh, he's one of my favorites. Yeah. One of my favorites. Just Beer Run. Total genius. Yeah, Beer Run. B-E-E-R-U-N, Beer Run. <laughs> A couple of kids from Abilene, yeah, went up to see Robert Earl King. Yeah, it's a great song. Yeah. Well, you know, we are we are over the hour mark. Okay. That, that doesn't really mean anything. You want to play another song or two? And uh, sure, I'll play. Just I'll play take you. us out. Sure. Um, why don't I? This is um this is the as close to a title track uh, on this new album as uh, it, it'll get. It's called The Currency of Forgiveness. Coffee brewed hours before she's awake Hot water save for the shower he takes Drives with no sense of direction Sometimes accepts a course correction Listens to the same story told a hundred times Waits patiently at the end of the line Holding doors, holding tongues 
I'll even tell when our days are done Worth all you have and nothing less All the tears and years that you invest There from the moment you met No IOUs, no repaid debts in the currency of forgiveness An apology long before there's a fight No admission of who's wrong or who's right A half-hearted confession from some past life indiscretion Worth all you have and nothing less It's a beautiful complicated mess Will it all add up to happiness? No IOUs, no repaid debts In the currency Forgiveness It's a long haul, there's bumps in the road It's only heavy if you don't share the load No regrets, big or small Always say I love you before nightfall Worth all you have and nothing less Life keeps you up at night but love never rests isn't this why you both said yes? No IOUs, no repaid debts In the currency of forgiveness In the currency Thanks. Thanks. Um, did maybe maybe you mentioned it? I don't remember. Have, did you go to college? Don't put your guitar away yet. Okay. Did you go go to college? I did. Know? I did, did not not to. Uh, I went to. Um, I I took the long way around. Okay. I went two years to a community college up in Port Huron. Oh right. Uh, and I I got a associate degree in in graphic design and advertising, okay. Okay. and then uh, and then I I went. I went to Cal. I went a year to Siena Heights College in Adrian, Michigan. Okay. And again, I took art, uh, but I I was trying to do fine art because okay. my brother's a sculptor, mm -hmm. and a lithographer, and a painter, and he he put he sort of encouraged me to try the fine art side mm -hmm. for a while. And I knew the first day of painting class. I knew the first <laughs> day that this was not for me. Right. So right. I I quickly pivoted and took more graphic design, took right. photography, but I, it was there that I took two creative writing classes Okay, and I had this cool professor and I started, you know, we were writing poetry, but I was writing songs mm -hmm. and he recognized it. He said, wow. He says, he said, you know, this sounds more like a song. He mm -hmm. says, I, I, you know, he says, I know it's poetic, but he said, it sounds like it's a song. And right. I said, well, it is. <laughs> he said, well, he says, if you okay. want to bring your guitar into class and play your songs, I, got, I have no oh, problem. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was really cool for okay. me because then I, I started, ha you know, kind of getting feedback on them from the class. Right. And I, I felt like I was really stretching my writing, trying mm -hmm. to be more poetic. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then I after that, I moved to California for a year. I had an opportunity to move a buddy of mine out to 
San Diego and I stayed mm-hmm. for a year. Okay. And then ended up coming back in 76. I went back to the University of Michigan School of Art and finished up there. Okay. So I graduated from Michigan oh, okay. uh, in 78. It actually, yeah, 78 I left there and I started in the advertising okay. business. Yeah, yeah, the reason I ask that question is because your songs are just so well structured that, uh-huh. you know, it seems like there's a lot of uh, formal training there, but but not really a whole lot, though, really. It's, it's, mostly, no, it's it, mostly feel for you, isn't it? It, it is. Just, it, you just and you know, thing. I've written a lot. I've I and was, even if you are educated, you still have to have that thing. Yeah. You know and what I mean? I, I wrote a lot of advertising, you know, stuff where you, you have to right. you have to you have to figure out ways to communicate in the vernacular of your audience. You know, so it's like you can't be too poetic in that in that environment. Right. But you have to be creative. You have to know yeah. how to how to structure language how to write headlines that are catchy, and a I lot think of it's psychological language. Totally, totally yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, totally it is. Bernays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bernaysian. So, all right. Why don't you play us one more time? One more song. I mean. So I'm gonna play you. The, I'm gonna play you the oldest song that I still do. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna let you play it out. And then that's. Well, you began your life Before you began to swim But remember The water was there before you so Don't abuse it Use it in the right way Games are here to play Tomorrow and today But remember Not to cheat Before the day goes by bound to get beat and you wonder about the wind will it ever blow your way again as your hair grows thin and you commit your sins walk your life on needles and pins you wonder yes you wonder I tend to see the humor in things other people don't And I have this life all to my own Still don't know what it takes to be alone No man's story of a young man's dream It's about the saddest thing I've ever seen It's about the saddest thing I've ever seen And you wonder Will it ever be the same? Will the days be long and hot or cold again? As your teeth fall out and you try to shout Your voice gets cracked by a meaningless doubt You wonder, yes you wonder Fourth of July Every girl and guy is dancing in the street Ain't nobody home Ain't nobody gonna work Ain't nobody gonna roam Life is rough and life is tough Life just isn't long enough But remember, we all get along And someday low, we'll all be on And you wonder about the dead Are we what we were Or what we said As we crumble up We stumble down Nobody cares if we make a sound We wonder Yes we wonder Alright <laughs> I still enjoy oh, playing that song How far back does that one go? 76 1976 yeah. Wow. How old were you? So uh, I think I was 21 then, I think. Wow. Something like that. 20, 21, I think. So you is. got an old soul. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, I was born in 54, 76. So yeah. is that 20? Maybe 20? Yeah. 21? 
Right but, on. you know, I was behind the curve there. I mean, Jackson Brown wrote uh, these days <laughs> when he was like, what, 15 or 16? Oh, did he really? Yeah. Did he really? Huh. That dude's an old soul. <laughs> anyway, thanks for... Thanks hey, for having me. I appreciate I really you enjoy out. this. Yeah. I really enjoyed yeah. the conversation. I never, I never met you before. This is the first time we met. Yep. And uh, I feel like I've known you forever. Me too. And um, it's it's been a real pleasure to have you here. And I really appreciate you finding the value in what I'm trying to do here. And uh, well, we again. every we all appreciate it. Uh, all the all the artists, all the songwriters, we appreciate. Well, what you're doing. That's what I'm trying to do. So, All right, so you're listening to Radio America in Detroit. I'm your host, Robert Lewis, and this has been Mike Ward.